very good day to all of you. Today we will learn what is GFR, that is glomerular filtration rate and uh, very important physiological aspects of glomerular filtration rate. So this is a very common uh, term we use in our day-to-day -day clinical practice, especially in renal uh, uh, clinical uh, practice. So um, uh, before moving on to the glomerular filtration rate and its physiological aspect, let's uh, recall our knowledge on functional anatomy of the renal system. Very brief overview. Now, you all know that we have two kidneys and these two kidneys, they will drain by the two ureters into the urinary bladder. So ultimately from the urinary bladder, the urine, which is formed from the kidneys, will be emptied into the outside of the body through the urethra. So, if the kidney, now look at this picture, if the kidney is bisected longitudinally, you can clearly identify two zones, that is the outer cortex as well as the inner medulla. Those are the two regions we can identify clearly. And the medulla is also divided into 8 to 10 cone-shaped masses. Those are known as, you can see these cone-shaped masses. They are like renal, uh, they are known as renal pyramids. So you can clearly identify there is a small apex here and there is a base here in each of these cone-shaped pyramids. So... Now, this apex of this uh, renal pyramid is known as renal papilla. So, renal papilla is draining urine into the minor calyx. You can see that here, minor calyx is here. And from minor calyces, different, different minor calyces will drain to the major calyx. Okay. Then from the major calyces, they, uh, now there are different uh, type, I mean, different amounts of minor calyces will be there. They lead to the renal pelvis, ultimate portion of the um, renal medulla. So that is the renal pelvis. So which is the one which is drained ultimately by the ureter. So this is the, the basic overview of the uh, urine drainage uh, tubes of the um, renal system. And if somebody asks from you, what is the functional unit of the kidney? What is your answer? The functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. So if you take a nephron, you can see there is a renal corpuscle. So renal corpuscle is usually composed of mainly two parts. That is a capillary tuft that is known as the glomerulus as well as a Bowman's capsule, a capsular shaped renal tubule which is going to embed the glomerulus, that vascular, that uh, glomerular trough, tough. So glomerulus plus the renal corpuscle, uh, sorry, Bowman capsule plus a glomerulus is known as the renal corpuscle. And then uh, this uh, Bowman's capsule then will be leading as the proximal tubule, proximal convoluted tubule. And then you have the distal convoluted tubule in between this proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule, you have the loop of Henle. So in loop of Henle, there are two limbs, descending limb and the ascending limb. And distal tubule will lead to the collecting tubule and then to the collecting duct and to the bladder. So these are the most important parts of the nephron. So each human kidney has approximately 1 million of nephrons. So as I told you earlier also, each nephron contains, now if we take this uh, big amount, this big picture into a very simplified manner, this uh, nephron contains two major portions. That is the tuft of glomerular capillaries that is called the glomerulus as well as the long tubule in which the filtered fluid is converted into urine. So that is uh, being divided into proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, connecting tubule, like that. So the glomerulus contains a network of branching and anastomosing glomerular capillaries. So from one end, it is starting as apparent arterial, as shown in this picture. And then it is going to be divided into lots of glomerular capillaries. And then after that, it will join somehow to form the efferent arterioid. 
So, fluid filter from the glomerular capillaries will enter to the Bowman's capsule. Then, that filtered fluid will enter to the proximal tubule. From that, fluid flows into the loop of Henle and uh, then through the distal convoluted tubule and so on. So, now there are two types of uh, nephrons. If you see, if you collect all the nephrons in our body, there are two types. Those are known as cortical nephrons and juxtamedullary nephrons. So, usually they say 85% of all the nephrons are known as uh, cortical nephrons. Those are the nephrons with glomeruli in the outer part, outer portions of the renal cortex. Okay, have short loops. You can see those things, short loops of Henle. Those are the cortical nephrons. And then juxta, uh, medullary nephrons, they are the nephrons with glomeruli in the juxta medullary region of the renal, uh, juxta medullary region of the cortex. Those are known as juxta medullary nephrons and they have long loops when you compare them with the cortical nephrons. Right. So, now with that basic overview of the anatomical aspect of our kidneys, now let's move on to the basic mechanism of urine formation. Now you know when you have the urine formation, the whole process, you have mainly four parts, four phenomena. First one is you have to have filtration, then you have to have reabsorption, then little bit of secretion, then you have the excretion. So, filtration, reabsorption, secretion, and ultimate output as the excretion. So, those are the events of urine formation. So, today, we are going to talk about mainly the filtration. So, which is the first step of urine formation, that is glomerular filtration. All right. So, if I ask you what is reabsorption, that is actually selected selective movement of substances from the tibule into plasma, returning needy substances because some are filtered without knowing. So these things will be again reabsorbed while it is going through the rest of the part of the nephron. So what is secretion then? That is additional waste materials will be secreted. Those which were not been uh, filtered through the glomerular capillaries earlier at the initial step, they will be secreted in the renal tubules with the time. So, now uh, glomerular capillary membrane. So, this is also a very important part or a structure when you talk about glomerular filtration rate. So, it is the membrane through which fluid passes from the glomerular capillary to the Bowman's capsular space. So, it is actually very, very important one. Now, I have shown you in the bottom picture, uh, that is a, a small uh, section of the glomerular capillary membrane. This one, okay. So, when you talk about the glomerular capillary membrane, it has three layers. Look at the top picture. So, it has endothelium of the glomerular capillaries. Now, this is the capillary side, this reddish color one. Endothelium of the glomerular capillaries. Then you have the basement membrane. And then this basement membrane, you have the layer of epithelial cells of Bowman's capsule. So, this is the capsular side, Bowman's capsular side, this is the capillary. Capillary endothelium, you have the basement membrane and you have the uh, layer of epithelial cells of the Bowman's capsule. So, that layer, these epithelial cells are known as podocytes. All right. So, these are known as podocytes. You can see the shape is also different. So, if you take all together these three layers, that is known as collectively this one as the glomerular capillary membrane. So, you can understand clearly if uh, filtration happens, it has to go through all these three layers. So, it is a very, very selective action. Now, if you go into um, more details about each of these layers, now if you take this uh, glomerular capillary, okay, endothelium of the glomerular capillaries, so these have fenestrations. Right, fenestrations means those are holes. These are the holes. Okay, this is the capillary side. You can see some holes are there through which this filtration will be filtered. And then you have the basement membrane. It has collagen 
uh, fibers and proteoglycans and they have large spaces. And remember, this endothelium of the capillary membrane as well as the basement membrane, both are negatively charged. And the other one, that is the third layer, you know what is the third layer? That is the layer of the epithelial cells in the Bormann's capsular site, which is composed of podocytes. It is also negatively charged. So all three layers are negatively charged and also this podocyte layer have has slits. You can see these filtration slits. So the most important phenomenon or the feature is all three layers have negative charges. So uh, glomerular capillary membrane permeability, if you take this thing to your, into account, impermeable to some solutes like plasma protein, red blood cells, they cannot be filtered. That is one feature. And highly permeable to most of the other dissolved substances like glucose, sodium, very permeable. And calcium fatty acids, which are bound to proteins, they are not filtered. And uh, now it is clear that some substances are filtered freely, while other substances are not filtered freely through the glomerular capillary membrane. So who determines this filterability of this uh, substance through the glomerular capillary membrane? Who determines? Yes. It is determined by two factors. First one is the size of the molecule, particular molecule. And the second one is electrical charge of the molecule. Now, if you take the uh, size of the molecule, that is the first factor, larger molecules, it is very obvious, no? Larger molecules, less filtrable. Okay? And uh, uh, now, when you look at this table, you can see, uh, if you now, if you take water, right? Water, the filterability as one, right? If you take as an example, sodium, the filterability again, same as water. That is one. Glucose, one. Inulin, one. Then myoglobin, 0 0.75. Albumin, 0 0.005. So, myoglobin has filterability less than water. Okay, this somewhat large and molecular weight, if you look at the molecular weight, it's a big one, 17,000 compared to water. And look at this albumin. The molecular weight is 69,000. Filtrability is very, very, very low. Even it has 0 0.005 chance. Okay. Still, it has some amount of filtrability. But when you compare it with water, very, very, very low filtrability because of its molecular weight, high molecular weight. Okay. And then the electrical charge. Now, can you remember that I have told all the three layers of the glomerular capillary membrane are negatively charged? Yes. So, same, same charges will be repelled. This is very obvious. And if uh, different types of charges are there, they will be attracted together. So, it's uh, they are more filterable. So, if you take negatively charged molecules, such as albumin, usually will be repelled from the glomerular capillary membrane, filtered less easily. But if you take positively charged ones, they will be attracted towards the membrane. And if their molecular weight is very uh, small enough, they can be um, filtered. And the neutral substances will be more readily filtered than negatively charged ones. But uh, when compared to positively charged one, it is less filterable but equal molecular weight should be there, okay? So you can see from this picture, if you have cations, that means positively charged ones, they are attracted and filterable, uh, but you have to always consider the molecular weight. And then neutral ones, some will be filtered, some will not be filtered. And anions, anionic ones or negatively charged ones, usually will not be filtered, they will be repelled but one or two will be somehow be escaped because of the very, very low molecular weight size. Okay, right. Uh, so this graph also shows you how uh, anions, right? Anions will be uh, not, I mean, polyanionic dextrans, they have very, very low filtrability compared to cationic dextrans and neutral dextrans are in the middle of the filtrability, that graph. Right, so... Now, if I ask you a question, 
how might the contents of the filtrate be altered if the filtration membrane is damaged or destroyed? So I'm asking about the glomerular capillary membrane. So more than one answer would be correct. First one, reduction in the filtration volume, increased proteins, increased glucose, presence of blood cells. So if uh, filtration membrane, now filtration membrane is the barrier for uh, some molecules, right? But uh, some are freely being filtered. Otherwise, if it is there or not, they will be somehow being filtered. But some will not be filtered because of the charge or due to the molecular weight like that. So what should be the answer? More than one would be acceptable. Yes. If you have listened carefully, you know that the filtrate will now have increased proteins as well as presence of blood cells. Earlier, proteins will not be allowed as well as red blood cells were not be allowed to be filtered because of the size of the uh, and also the charge. Let's see whether we are correct. Yes. So you can get an idea of the uh, glomerular filtration membrane. Clear? Yes. Now, with all that basic background, now we'll see what is the composition of the glomerular filtrate. So it is the same as the plasma, except that it has no significant amount of proteins and red blood cells. So the most important two things that are not present in the glomerular filtrate is the protein as well as the blood cells. So you when you compare with the plasma, if plasma has 3,900 to 5,000 milligrams per deciliter, Glomerular filtration has usually only 6 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. Okay. And uh, red blood cells usually are not seen in the glomerular filtrate, otherwise, one or two cells. Right. So then we will move on to the definition of the glomerular filtration rate. Now we have uh, learned all the basic background regarding the filtration barrier and everything. And let's move on to the glomerular filtration rate. So that is known as GFR, the amount of plasma, okay, that is filtered by all the glomeruli of all, I mean, both kidneys in a given period of time. Okay, either per minute or maybe per day. So what is the definition now? The amount of plasma that is filtered from all the glomeruli, that word should be there, all, and from both kidneys in a given period of time. Why I have given, or oh, the textbooks give you given period of time, because it either it can be per minute or per day. So normal GFR is about 125 milliliters per minute. So that is at this rate, it would be 180 liters per day. Is it clear? Yes. So then another uh, small, small uh, uh, new key terms you have to learn. Filtration fraction. So what is filtration fraction? That is the fraction of the renal plasma which becomes the filtrate. Okay. So renal plasma flow uh, is usually 600 to 700 milliliters per minute. So filtration fraction is GFR divided by renal plasma flow. So usually the renal plasma flow is 650 if you take the average. And if you take the GFR as 120 milliliters per minute, it is 20%. So filtration fraction is 20%. So what are the determinants of the GFR? GFR is usually determined by two major factors. Those are net filtration pressure, okay, uh, and the second one is the glomerular filtration coefficient. So glomerular filtration rate equals to, uh, this one is net filtration pressure. That is the sum of the hydrostatic and colloid osmotic forces across the glomerular membrane. We will deal with it uh, in shortly. And the filtration coefficient. So this formula you have to remember very well. Right. Now, these are the four Starling processes across the glomerular membrane. You can see there are four Starling processes are being operated. Hydrostatic pressure inside the glomerular capillaries. Okay. There are two hydrostatic pressures. One is inside the glomerular capillaries. It is denoted as PG. G is for glomerular capillary. 
and the next one is bowman's capsular hydrostatic pressure that is denoted by b b is for bowman's capsule and then there are two colloid osmotic pressures one again within the glomerular capillary that is denoted by phi g g is for glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure within the bowman's capsule b is for bowman's capsule phi b you can understand that so there are four starling forces so if you take hydrostatic pressure inside the glomerular capillary usually it is about 60 millimeters of mercury and it promotes the glomerular filtration you can see that by this arrow it is promoting towards glomerular filtration so usually it is determined by three factors arterial pressure afferent arterial resistance and efferent arterial resistance okay and then hydrostatic pressure within the bowman's capsule the other one it will oppose the glomerular filtration okay it is about 18 millimeters of mercury these figures are important okay remember those things but remember it does not play a major role it is a very very minute dis uh, the contribution so when the bowman's capsular colloid sorry hydrostatic pressure increases gfr reduces okay and then you have the glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure again it's very important it is 32 millimeters of mercury created mainly by the plasma proteins so it is opposing the filtration so usually if the uh, glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure is increasing it reduces the glomerular filtration rate and vice versa you can understand that right so now you can see glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure as the blood flows from afferent to efferent arterial oil one fifth of the fluid in the capillary is filtering to the bowman's capsule so what will happen if the fluid is going to be filtered uh, to the bowman's capsule now within the uh, glomerular capillary plasma protein concentration increases by 20 percent concentration right so colloid osmotic pressure entering the glomerulus is 28 millimeters of mercury and because of this 20 percent concentration increase it rises to 36 millimeters of mercury at the efferent arterial end. So, average is roughly 32, uh, that is 32 millimeters of mercury because of this uh, difference, okay, due to the one fifth of fluid uh, flow into the Bowman's capsule. Okay, so average of the glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure, why it has become 32 because of this uh, difference. Then this uh, glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure also being determined by two major factors. That is arterial plasma colloid osmotic pressure as well as the fraction of plasma filtered by the glomerular capillaries. That is the filtration fraction. Okay. And the next one, the last one, that is osmotic pressure in the Bowman's capsule. Okay. This is known as negligible. Why we assume that uh, proteins, which is the most important contributing partner for creating colloid osmotic pressure, is usually zero. Okay. So, usually we don't have uh, proteins within the Bowman's capsule. Therefore, we consider it's very, very low or, or else. So, we consider osmotic pressure in the Bowman's capsule is zero. Okay. So, if you put all these forces together, now, there are two forces of favoring filtration and two forces favoring, not favoring, opposing filtration. So, what are the two forces which will favor the filtration? Glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure that is 60 and Bowman's capsular colloid osmotic pressure that is 0. Then opposing factors, filtration factors are Bowman's capsular hydrostatic pressure that is 18 and glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure that is 32. So, if you put all together and we, if you take a sum, that is the one which is known as net filtration pressure after uh, deducting and after calculating those these things together, we can have net filtration pressure as 10 millimeters of mercury. All right. Okay, so that is the net filtration pressure which will come as positive 10 millimeters of mercury. That means again, 
towards favoration okay favoring the uh, filtration that is 10 millimeters mercury net filtration pressure is it clear i hope it is clear then the next uh, factor which determines the gfr that is filtration coefficient or kf okay so filtration coefficient is gfr divided by net filtration pressure so if you take gfr is roughly 125 milliliters per minute and net filtration pressure is 10 so how uh, how come the co filtration coefficient the amount would be 12.5 milliliters per minute per uh, millimeter of mercury of filtration pressure so you can uh, calculate it for uh, kidney weight as well if you calculate if you take the kidney weight and all these things they have already calculated it 4.2 milliliters per minute per millimeter of mercury per 100 grams of kidney weight okay so these figures you have to remember in your brain so what are the factors which will affect the filtration coefficient it is governed by two things mainly permeability of the filtration barrier capillary uh, glomerular capillary membrane as well as surface area so permeability of the glomerular capillaries if you have increased the permeability it will increase the gfr and if you have large surface area it will increase the gfr but suppose if you have chronic glomerular nephritis like a disease condition where you have reduction or the damage to the uh, glomerular capillary membrane so you have reduction of the surface area of filtrability so definitely you have reduced gfr right so now we have come to the end of the lecture now we have learned about um, it's very very clear now we talked about the glomerular filtration membrane and then we learned about factors affecting uh, filtrability of a substance okay that is the size and the charge of the molecule and we learned uh, difference of the composition of glomerular filtrate with regard to plasma and we learned the gfr and what are the important parts of definition what is the normal gfr value and then we learned the filtration fraction and determinants of GFR it is the net filtration pressure and the KF. So that is filtration coefficient. And we learned each force in the net filtration pressure. And then KF and GFR also we learned that surface area and the permeability are the determining factors of filtration coefficient. So now the these are the things. So you have to know that if any force which will affect the net filtration pressure so net filtration pressure has four parts you no know, uh, four starling forces so if any factor is uh, affecting the uh, starling forces all these things will indirectly will be affecting the glomerular filtration rate so that thing also you have to remember okay so this is a very uh, basic overview of the glomerular filtration rate i hope that you have learned very important things uh, and very basic things of the glomerular filtration rate from this lecture. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon with a new lecture. Thank you and goodbye.